Welcome to another session of our lecture Innovation Management and Marketing at the University of Lübeck in cooperation with Technical University of Lübeck. Um, last time we talked about promotion as a key and instrumental element of, uh, of marketing and uh, we stopped talking about online marketing specifically. And uh, on the slide you see all the different kind of appearances of online marketing. So online marketing is not only marketing via Facebook, it's also uh, marketing via uh, websites in general, via SMS, for example. WhatsApp, for example, uh, announced that there are uh, increasingly having advertisement, uh, so paid forms of posts and information uh, or LinkedIn. Uh, there are several kind of platforms uh, you may use. Some platforms are visible uh, to the uh, to the end user, such as uh, e newsletters or social networks, uh, but some are also invisible to the end user. For example, when it comes to search engine optimization. But we also have very, very modern, um, modern ways of uh, online marketing. For example, we have uh, voice engine optimization as a very uh, kind of a new topic, voice engine optimization. Um, because uh, in today's world, um, Alexa, Siri, Cortana, Bixby, um, and uh, in China, there are um, different other uh, forms as well here. We have intelligent digital assistants, <clears throat> and we are estimating that about uh, 2021, <clears throat> so in one year time, there will be about 30% of the global search uh, volume will no longer involve screens. So there's nobody typing in something, but it's just being a uh, voice being used. And uh, there's also going to be also uh, what we call a zero click uh, result. So you don't have the uh, Google organic um, uh, hit list, but you just have one, uh, one feedback. So one search result. So we call it zero click result. And that is usually what is happening right now. If you type in something in Google and you get one result back, which is on the right in the uh, so-called info uh, info box. OK, so let's uh, look at some of um, some further elements here. <clears throat> you can see that online marketing in general is on the rise. Um, and these are old numbers, uh, but you still see uh, numbers are not so important, but you su still see the trend. So a lot of people are refraining in marketing agencies and companies from ATL. So from the traditional form of advertisement, which is above the line advertisement. And they are putting more investment capital expenditure in what we call BTL, below the line advertisement, which is all the non-classical forms of advertisement. And uh, we talked about that. That is very important. Um, we differentiate between three different uh, classes of, uh, of media. One is called the owned media. This is what uh, literally what you own, right? What belongs to you, which is, for example, your Facebook page, which is your LinkedIn corporate uh, page, which is your corporate website. Um, this media class you need to manage. You need to you need to control you need to coordinate that etc etc you need to think about the content etc etc then paid media is what you uh, what you pay for for example in the in the form of paid posts um at the facebook uh, at the facebook platform or in form of banner or sponsored links uh, advertisement what is most interesting um yet is of course what you earn the so-called earned media class, the earned media class. And this is what you don't need to manage, but you need to inspire that. You need to inspire that because that is posts about your company, about your company's products in internet forums, in communities, in blogs, or somebody is posting about your company on Facebook in a positive content. Um, or about your products, or it's entering a review, for example, on the on the Amazon or on Alibaba. That is, um, in general, that is the most important thing here. This um, earned media, because then the uh, there is not such of a negative uh, appreciation and perception of that. 
because if people are exposed to paid media, for example, I'm not talking about uh, a TV commercial, but I'm talking about a sponsored post uh, on the Facebook, for example, or on LinkedIn, then they still perceive it as advertisement. So they feel that uh, somebody, a company is trying to push, is, is, is something is trying to sell something to the audience. But if somebody is writing um, a positive review about a product, about a service on Yelp uh, or uh, on, uh, like say, LinkedIn or whatever, Amazon, Alibaba, then of course this is not perceived as being advertisement. So it's more perceived as being an objective or honest personal statement about a product. And the, the more you're in a position to inspire so-called KOLs, key opinion leaders, KOLs, key opinion leaders to post about your company, to post about your product, the more successful you are. So looking at my own business, for example, or my, my own books, I was also um, uh, highlighting my my books uh, in the course and I was writing about my uh, my books so if um, and I got for example I got a, a review about the social media marketing book I've wrote it's a world bestseller um, I have wrote with my friends uh, Sven Hollinson and uh, Philip Kotler the marketing guru and now if I'm posting about my own book uh, people say okay that, that may be interesting but um, what is more powerful is, for example, if, and, and it was the case this week, um, he sent it to me, some uh, professor in Latin America was using my book in one of his uh, digital marketing classes. And he said, oh, the resonance of the students was just fantastic, right? I didn't pay him for that. Uh, so this is what I, what I can call earned media. So somebody is posting about my book and his positive experience with the students using my book this is much more believable as if uh, i would i don't know have um, a sponsored link or a banner making advertisement for my book right so now of course uh, you uh, got to understand the difference very very clearly and um, smith developed a, a so-called sostac uh, model for planning online marketing activities first of all and it's it's a circular process it starts with the uh, situation analysis first of all you have to look at the situation of the corporation and also of the macro environment um, so what are you what are you currently using so which kind of platforms are you using are you using website you're using linkedin or twitter or uh, facebook uh, wechat etc etc so which which are the platforms you're using right now which platforms are used by competitors then what are the objectives? What do you want to accomplish um, using social media, using online marketing? So do you want a, want a sales increase or do you want to uh, just um, increase the uh, known um, uh, recall uh, of the company? So, so the, uh, the reputation of the brand of the company, for example. So it can be financial or non-financial goals. Then you need to uh, to lay down your strategy strategy is long-term strategy how are you positioning the brand in uh, social media what shall be the tonality um, tactics is the tactical plan um, that, that means so and how far are you implementing the strategy uh, on the different platforms action is really carrying out what what you do and control is clear is about uh, checking whether the objectives, therefore it's an error here to the objectives, whether the objectives you've stated are to be accomplished um, via the actions and tactics you're, uh, you're pursuing. Now, um, that is what I, what I was telling before uh, when I talked about earned media. That is an old slide. Uh, unfortunately, because there is no update on, 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 on that numbers. However, uh, already uh, maybe th that number is, uh, is likely to, to have increased. Um, but also and already in 2012, recommendation, recommendation by friends or by, by, by networks or by like minded people, like I said, just said on, on Amazon, on LinkedIn, on Facebook have a higher believability so people trust more these kind of information um, 
than traditional advertisement. You can also see that um, online consumer reviews, also they score very high. So 8% 8, 8 of total trust, total trust of um, um, their trust in uh, online consumer reviews. You see that commercials on TV, for example, here, they have a, a much lower credibility, much lower trust um, when it comes to uh, when it comes to customers. That is interesting. That is uh, very, very interesting. And that calls for the importance of the earned social media class. And that is what you need to inspire. And the better you, uh, you're in there, the more automatically sales will be generated. In, uh, by the way, in every industry, whether you are um, a medical device company, whether you are a pharmaceutical company, car company, automotive company, it doesn't make any difference. In the classic, uh, in the classic sequence, um, we had the so-called <clears throat> stimulus, FMOT and SMOT model. Um, the stimulus is um, a certain kind of trigger that, that is there. So, for example, we talked about that when we talked about um, the uh, market research and you remember the SR models and the SOR models when you have stimulus response and stimulus organism response models. So stimulus is price of a product, is the packaging, is the, uh, the place, so how it's presented, um, etc, etc. So this is the stimulus and then the first moment of truth is coming at the point of sale, at the point of sale. So for example, in the, uh, in the retail, so you go, you, you say, okay, I want a new pair of trainers or whatever, or you see a commercial and you, you go to the shop and to the Nike flagship. And the first moment of truth is if you go to the shop and you experience, you try it on and, and, and you like, or you don't like whatever. And the second moment of truth is really if you're experiencing the product afterwards. So after purchase, um, you're satisfied with the product or you're not satisfied with the product, but that is the so-called second moment of truth. And in next slides. Yeah. And in today's world, we have uh, an additional uh, trigger coming in or an additional element coming in, which is the zero moment of truth, the zero moment of truth. And the zero moment of truth, the zero moment of truth is you have the stimulus, but then what, what are you doing in the classic sequence? Um, you, uh, you shop online, whatever, or you go to the retail and you purchase a product. Um, but the zero moment of truth is um, if I'm interested in a product, if there is a stimulus coming in. Or so for, a, for example, I, I read a view, review or see an ad from, from Nike. And um, then I'm not, I'm, I'm not going online to the Nike flagship store. But before I do that, I look for reviews on the, uh, I Google that, right? I look for reviews on, um, for example, holiday check when it comes to hotels. I look for, um, for different prices when it comes uh, to Idealo.de or Billiger.de. Um, or I go to Twitter or to, uh, to the Alibaba. Alibaba. And um, I, 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 I look for online reviews. Or in general, I just use Google and Google um, about a certain kind of service, about a certain kind of company. For every product, not only when I buy trainers, but for every product. So if uh, also in the B2B, business to business, um, if somebody is trying to sell uh, whatever uh, <clears throat> nuclear power plants <laughs> or <laughs> I don't know, um, big wind turbines, uh, for example. Um, and what I'm doing, if I'm in the purchasing department of uh, a big entity, a big corporation, what I'm doing, uh, I'm also looking at how are those kind of uh, products, um, what is written about those kind of products in specialist forums, for example. So that is that that is new. That is new. And then I'm go to, going to the shop or I'm purchasing online and then it's the second moment of truth. But what is really uh, coming in new in today's world is the zero moment of truth. That is very nice um, an interesting uh, tool that is uh, especially interesting and uh, applicable in the uh, in the online marketing. Then we have 
uh, a so-called uh, 10 20 70 rule that and I, I was mentioning that before um, if you look on uh, on the internet there are just 10 people posting there the majority of uh, of people whether it's on uh, LinkedIn or Facebook they're just reading 20% are commenting they are reacting somehow but only 10 people are actively posting in the in the forums and these are the people you need these are the people you need to engage and um, and inspire because these are likely to generate um, earned media this is this is the group of people these are the KOLs the key opinion leaders um, if you inspire those and they post about uh, a product or a service that is much more uh, believable than if you have a paid form of advertisement if you have a classic ATL uh, campaign intensity of use of social networks uh, these are just numbers for uh, for Germany of course that varies from country to country in our most recent book uh, social uh, social media marketing uh, the global edition we uh, we have a new kind of uh, ranking explaining also the rise of uh, of TikTok um, and uh, in particular how companies can utilize TikTok uh, as and you see TikTok is not in here um, but it's very much growing such as uh, such as Instagram here you still find Google Plus which is no longer um, on the market it was Google's attempt to copy Facebook <clears throat> but it was not successful although Google is very powerful they but they didn't succeed in copying Facebook and offering a social platform where people are actively discussing participating however Google um, what we still have is a so-called Google brand account a Google brand uh, account and that is still um, still important for companies to have a Google brand and corporate account because uh, as Google is the world's most renowned and used widely used search engine it is very important still very important um, to be top of mind and top of search how we say that yeah ranking of the most uh, popular social networks in Germany uh, according to the share of users in percent or oh, that is not so interesting um, go ahead that is um, that is a, won a wonderful slide and, and and that is a very important slide doesn't look very uh, <laughs> very sexy however it is very important uh, because it shows you what what you need to do um, in uh, the digital arena so to say as a company as a corporation uh, also as a self entrepreneur first of all the first mantra is you need to listen carefully so you need, need to listen what is written about your company about your product about your corporation um, online then you need to learn from that also learn from that kind of criticism for example if you're criticized um, and that is very important and I talked about that before and remember the um, the learning I got from the uh, one of the uh, executives at Google and see so you cannot you cannot un Google yourself you cannot ungoogle yourself that is not possible therefore um, we can decide not to have a Facebook account we can decide not to have uh, not to be on LinkedIn not to be in any kind of internet forum but what we cannot do we cannot ungoogle ourselves meaning we cannot prevent other participants from setting up an account and talk negatively about our product or positively right so we need to learn then we need to act for example we need to react in time and that is a crucial thing in in, 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 in times of the internet because in the past if somebody is uh, entering a criticism a negative review on um, not not entering on Amazon but is, is, is filing a complaint with your corporation yeah you you get an answer within i don't know two days or 14 days whatever but now we're saying oh you have to react within 15 minutes um latest yeah latest 15 minutes to react to criticism if the criticism is put online otherwise it will multiply 
and you need to control what is happening on the internet and that is very cumbersome that is very difficult because um like i mentioned when we talked about the information overload we are bombarded with information just remember that uh roughly in today's world roughly just 500 hours of videos are uploaded just on youtube in every minute and <laughs> That, that is unimaginable and um, how can you consume all this kind of information how can you control that that is very very uh, tricky so, so we have a challenge in here you need to build up uh, already capacity i love that um, it is a brilliant uh, metaphor um, coming uh, from a, a friend of mine a professor colleague here this metaphor of um, bowling and pinball in the past in the past entities and enterprises here is a company they've been playing a game of bowling what does it mean so they are throwing a bowling ball which is a message at an audience so at potential customers and they hope for some effect so they hope that customers were buying the product but it was a kind of a one-way communication so the, the ball was not coming back right from the uh, from the pins and now in today's world we should be uh, we should be more playing pinball we should be playing pinball which is um, uh, shown on the slide so the company kicks in the ball here into the playing uh, playing field and then the ball is going to one bumper so meaning a customer so a customer is recognizing our ad right or our post about a product or a service or our information and then the ball is kicked to another customer and then the ball is kicked to another customer and then the ball is coming to the company and the company kicks in the ball again so you see that here um there is much more interactivities so it's not a one-way communication but it's communication in all kind of uh directions which means also you lose a bit of a control um, but again you cannot help it but you have to cope with it you have to manage that because you cannot ungoogle yourself so social media marketing is getting increasingly important in the framework of the web 2.0 um, and these are all the platforms um, that is an overview which is uh, updated uh, regularly which is shows the enormous amount of platforms we have um, available um, globally so these are some some award winning campaigns here uh, unfortunately we cannot uh, for copyright reasons we cannot show it but um, I, I can talk about that for example it is uh, a classic campaign from uh, the Starbucks corporation and Starbucks uh, started a campaign and they called it the sip face uh, campaign and it was for their frappuccino product um the frappuccino you can see in here and uh, it was very very simple it was not uh, a very big deal they they asked customers to uh <clears throat> to drink or to consume frappuccino and then after consuming it you should take a picture of it you should snap it right snapping is from coming from snapchat um, and then you should take it accordingly on social media with a hashtag sip face and what the result was and that is overwhelming uh, the result was overwhelming you can see here that just uh, within a period of four weeks that is just a period of four weeks there are 10 million people talking about not talking about starbucks but there were just uh, talking about this sip face uh campaign 10 million people so that's an enormous uh, amount here of uh, of customers being activated being engaged in the discussion about um, frappuccino so that was a very very classic very successful uh, very successful campaign from from Starbucks now who's her who is she who is she anybody recognizes her yeah Madonna of course that's Madonna now how many times has Madonna's YouTube channel been accessed last four years about 400 million times 370 to be precise now but the question is who's him okay 
it's <laughs> it says on the t-shirt <laughs> he's called it, it, this must be evan because it says on the t-shirt uh evan tube hd he probably is the youngest internet uh millionaire on the planet he runs a channel um and the channel on, on his channel he's testing toys and his channel has been uh, accessed one billion more than one billion times the last four years so uh with respect to his audience he's a much bigger star than madonna and bruce springsteen and uh whatever <laughs> coming uh coming together now what is interesting uh about this is again this is he's much more influence an influencer a key opinion leader he is a kol he is he's an influencer influencer and uh, he's much more important for uh, mattel for example or for star wars selling merchandise or selling toys to uh to young uh to young boys and girls than um traditional advertisement so youtube marketing for example via influencers is more important than traditional television radio cinema print whatever uh even paid postings um because those kind of people the influencers here and he is an influencer for the target group they are much more believable I again refer to the slide i've shown before they are much more believable than um the um <clears throat> the classic atl campaigns i love that um i not I don't only <laughs> love Danny, uh, Daniel Craig. I was talking about that during uh, our recent, most recent uh, World Marketing Summits. So uh, my friend David Zuritsky, he runs um, the channel, the, uh, the YouTube channel, the James Bond or the Bond Experience. James Bond is meant, of course, the Bond Experience. And now what is interesting here is that um, in his channel, he's explaining and he's, he's uh, reporting about the upcoming Bond, uh, Bond movies. For example, No Time to Die. So this is the next Bond movie. It's ready already, but it's not, uh, it's not shown in cinema so far due to Corona. But David was already talking about the, um, the army sweater worn by Daniel Craig in the movie coming from NPL. A traditional very traditional london um luxury brand doing uh lots of lots of lots of stuff uh like that most most of them casual wear now in his in his video he's 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 talking uh, about the uh, army sweater worn by um daniel craig in the upcoming no time to die video james bond video and now what is interesting is that the the uh, the first uh, production of the army sweater was quickly sold out um, before the movie even premiered so before the movie was out the army sweater was sold out <laughs> why because david was report uh, reporting about that he was not even paid about he was not even paid for that but um, it was it was sold out so that is um, interestingly here we have a blend now between uh, the product placement, the placement of products in the movies and influencer marketing via YouTube, which is very, very um, good combination. Very, very, very successful. Um, yeah, okay. We cannot talk about everything. Okay, but now the last uh, minutes I want to want to spend on uh, one of the most intelligent campaigns of all time, probably. Uh, and this will perfectly explain what content marketing is about content marketing. And we talked about content marketing before in the framework of Coca-Cola. Now, Dove is a cosmetic brand. It's not a luxury cosmetic brand such as uh, L'Oreal or whatever, but um, and that was their issue. That was their problem. They wanted to increase sales. What did they do? First of all, um, before they uh, came out with new products, they interviewed uh, 3,000 women all over the world, uh, whether they consider themselves being beautiful or what is their definition of beauty, etc., etc. So they were uh, being asked about cosmetics, about looks, about 
um, uh, whatever, dressing up and uh, image of beauty and advertisement in general. Now, what is interesting is um, that overall, um, oh, it's not, it's not on the slide, but overall only uh, 2%, oh yeah, it's on, on in the header, only 2% of women were describing themselves as beautiful. And um, they, they said that, uh, oh, it is a challenge that um, traditional media, so such as uh, television or print, is only showing beautiful women. Uh, and uh, it's, it's suggesting a kind of a stereotype of beauty. You can see it on the slide here. Penelope Cruz for L'Oreal, um, Catherine Cito Jones for Elizabeth Arden, Angelina Jolie for uh, Z Shadow, and uh, Juliette Binoche. Uh, the French actress for Lancôme. So all of the all of the ads are showing beautiful women, very beautiful, pretty uh, women. Um, of course, with appropriate makeup. But this this is all exchangeable. So all of the ads they have one thing in common: they lack uh, identification potential because. Uh, women said when they're being interviewed, I cannot uh, identify myself with uh, Angelina Jolie because I'm not as pretty as Angelina Jolie. Only 2% consider themselves being beautiful. And they lack differentiation because they're all alike. Uh, when women were asked about, uh, yeah, which kind of uh, testimonial, which kind of Hollywood actress was uh, advertising, which kind of product, they all mix it up. So nobody knows uh, after having seen that whether she was Angelina was uh, the testimonial for L'Oreal or for Lancome or for Nivea or whatever kind of a product. As a consequence, and that was so brilliant, um, you have to Google that. Um, you have to look for that uh, on onslaught. That was the one of the first uh, uh, films that, uh, that was done by Unilever. Onslaught, meaning attack. And they were showing uh, a young girl bombarded with advertisement and she gets into bulimia and so eating disorder and into plastic surgery finally and unilever was uh saying um i don't know we have a beauty stereotype and no no woman can apply no ordinary woman can apply can comply with this kind of beauty stereotype we want to go back to natural beauty and this is what they did so overnight they changed all of their uh, websites. They took away all the products from the website and they were just talking about how um, can you build up the confidence and the self-esteem of young girls? Um, how, I don't know, how can you get, uh, get your daughter away from uh, having uh, eating disorders, etc., etc. Now, it was a completely change uh, of paradigm and they showed for the first time ever as a cosmetic company, they were, sh they were showing women such as her. She was uh, 49 years of age when the campaign was being shot. It was one of the um, first campaigns of all time that uh, was interactive. So you could interact with the campaign. It was shown on Times Square in New York as an electronic billboard. And you can type in your uh, mobile phone whether you consider her being withered. So a bit kind of a strange or wonderful um and is she uh having ugly spots so is is is, is 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 she pretty or is she not pretty is it beauty spots or ugly spots now that that is interesting uh because for the first time ever they are not showing uh, a product so like, uh, such as a anti-aging lotion or whatever but they're just showing a girl and they're asking whether you consider her being rather ugly or pretty and the, uh, the website runs campaign for real beauty real beauty because what they wanted to do uh, is they wanted to instill discussions about the brand and about what beauty is is she bald means without hair uh, of course she's without hair but is she beautiful at the same time or can she be beautiful at the same time is she fat is she overweight or is she just fabulous? Or can you be fabulous being fat? Um, half empty or half full? Does sexiness depend on how full your cups are? 
there's uh, really a, a, a direct trigger here to interact with the campaign join the beauty debate go to campaignforrealbeauty.co.uk and discuss um, and that was interesting because uh, that was content they talked about content why can't more women feel glad to be gray join the beauty debate is she gray of course she's gray of course she's great but uh, can she be can she be gorgeous can she be wonderful having gray hair of course she can but why is it then then that uh, the uh, traditional cosmetic companies such as uh, l'oreal or zichy or Lancôme, they are only showing beautiful women only supermodels in um in uh, in postures that no no women can ever identify with so that is their trigger they were showing ordinary ladies with real names wonderful uh print campaign uh the self-esteem fund for building the self-esteem she thinks she's ugly it says here on uh, uh in the print ad let's help change her mind again now what is interesting about that is again there what is the product what is the product where is the product there is no product uh, because the the logic was the strategy was just to build the brand to position the brand around natural beauty that was the uh, that was the task first of all before coming out with a brand uh, be, before coming out with the product so for the first time ever they were using just ordinary women ordinary women with tattoos dimple skin um no perfect photoshopped beauties such as her or her she was 64 when the campaign was being shot and then they came out with a product and now that is interesting as well because they they had a they had an ad that was show, in, in the ad they were showing um old women and it was always said here uh in the in the ad are oh, too old to be in an anti-aging ad question mark to old to be in anti-aging ad question mark right and then um the final conclusion is oh this but this is not an anti-aging spot this is this is not anti-age this is pro-age and they call it and that was a brilliant a brilliant move and they call it dove pro-age the the dove pro-age campaign because that is um linguistically that is sheer brilliant why is it brilliant because everybody's talking about anti-age anti-cellulite anti-dimple anti-fatigue anti 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 everybody's talking like that l'oreal zichedo lancon nivea they're all talking that and duff for the first time ever in the cosmetic uh promotion history they were saying our product is called duff pro age and as a result and the results were overwhelming here you can see it here um, after the launch of the campaign in Gen 07 um, Nivea anti-age body and it said anti-age body that's the competitor's product and Dove pro age body yeah pay pay attention to anti and pro um, Nivea market share dropped by 50 percent from uh, 105 to 059 and what happened to the market share of Dove and this is just three months it's nothing three months in three months the market share of duff pro h body increased by factor seven increased by factor seven this is this i think this had never happened before uh in the history of cosmetic uh cosmetic marketing why is it so successful why is it so successful because women can identify or could identify with that and the campaign is still running it's still on however they made a big mistake uh, they made a very very big mistake in the campaign because Unilever the mother company is having different kind of lines of businesses food personal care and home care so in the line of business they uh, they have Dove but they also have Axe in some countries it's called Lynx Lynx body spray uh, but they also have Slimfast and Slimfast is having the same kind of customers as Dove um the same kind of ladies but having a completely opposite value proposition because slim fast 
they want to um, they want to um, get women lose weight and there is also a sharp contrast between um, the value proposition of ax and the value proposition of DAF. Here you see a novel ax tag temptation. It is about really a beautiful woman. Um, a lot of this uh, erotic attractions being used like we talked like we talked about. And DAF here you see um, at Dove, we want to free, uh, help free ourselves and the next generation from beauty stereotypes. It's this message that's at the heart of our campaign for real beauty and self-esteem fund. And it's why we continue to create thought provoking ads and confidence building programs and messages. And that's lovely formulated that embrace all definitions of beauty, all definitions of beauty, right? All, all kind of uh, ladies with um, non classic beauty. Uh, appearances but when it, when it comes to Duff this is the case but Unilever also owns Axe but when it comes to Axe they are using traditional um, ladies traditional models being photoshopped looking beautiful of course that is a different target group however it resulted in a negative halo effect and um, many many customers around the world uh, were accusing Duff and Unilever in particular of course of hypo uh, being hypocritic, uh, being um, not telling the truth, being inconsistent across their brand portfolio. In particular, when it comes to um, SlimFast. In particular, when it comes to SlimFast, because SlimFast, um, you wanna you wanna um, help uh, women lose weight. But why? Because <laughs> why shall a, a woman lose weight? Because every every woman is beautiful the way she is or no because here's it here it says the Duff mission here is to make more women feel beautiful every day by widening the definition of beauty and inspiring them to take care of themselves but here you have a completely different value proposition yeah because here they suggest you need to trim or slim fast to lose weight. So overall, here's my appreciation. Uh, Unilever successfully repositioned DAF around the content of natural beauty. And it created a unique, a very unique value set, which differentiates the brand clearly from its competitors. And in summary, the elements of the value system perfectly fit the value proposition created. And most importantly, think about 98%, not only 2% consider themselves as being beautiful. The identification of the target customer, right? Women with the value proposition is enabled in a compelling way. However, the problem was there are opposing value propositions of DAF and, and Lynx, and in particular, SlimFast. And what they did, they tarnished the brand uh, proposition and the authenticity. So uh, Unilever was severely attacked by, uh, by customers, uh, by women, and they complained, and uh, they lost uh, a lot of their market share. They lost again, uh, and they even thought about selling the links and selling the axe brand okay but that is um the future of uh, of marketing or uh, that is a very contemporary marketing success story overall because like coca-cola i was mentioning that before uh, coca-cola was trying to move from creative excellence to content excellence and here is and this is what uh, red bull did for example very successfully or Porsche. Uh, but also Dove, because Dove was talking not so much about the product, but talking about the content of um, beauty in general and beauty stereotypes uh, moving away from the product. And that is much more engaging, inspiring, think about earned media, inspiring than the traditional ATL. Thanks very much for your uh, for your time. Um, this is it for today. Uh, I stay in the line as always, and I look forward to seeing you for another video. Cheers. Bye bye.